Improv classes are a way for students to break out of their comfort zone, gain confidence and tap into their creative side. Our Callum Hawker has more on how drama workshops at a local high school are doing just that. The Lloyd Minster Comprehensive High School put on drama workshops for students this past week, tapping into their talents in theatre. Hey, back off! This is my Halloween candy! No! Scott Patey, the instructor of the improv classes, shares how his exercises grab a lot of engagement from his students. Today, I'm just always trying to bring in new games, new warm-ups, new fun ideas, just to give them a different taste of, of improv, uh, a palate cleanser, if you will. The grade 11 students who participated in the workshop were taught tips on how to keep a conversation going through improv and what you need to make a story entertaining and long-lasting. When you're with a story, you want to have like your basic elements of a story, like relationships, location, problem, all that. And you don't want to have too many problems or your problem be too dark or anything. You want to have fun with it. That's what I really enjoy about it. Katie and the drama students returned to the stage at Black Box Theatre, where they performed a show on Wednesday night. Callum Hawker, Primetime Local News. The Lloyd Minster Concerned Citizens for Senior Care Society is hosting its annual general meeting on Monday. Stacy Comer found out what topics are on the agenda. We're joined today on Primetime Local News by Graham Brown. Graham is the president of the Concerned Citizens for Senior Society here in Lloydminster. Graham, thank you so much for joining me. You're very welcome. Let's talk about the group and the AGM that's coming up on Monday. First of all, for those who don't know, Graham, tell me a little bit about the group and what you do. Well, our main concern is seniors care. Um, and back in 2005, when Dr. Raf Saeed and Rodney Sellers were running into real problems with uh, the shortage of a very acute shortage of uh, care, long-term care spaces in our community. Uh, they started trying to get people together to work on that. And a few people got together and worked on that for a number of years, met, met every Tuesday. Um, and uh, then it branched into uh, a bigger group like us now. And then about 10 years ago, we formed a, a society. So now we've been a society for 10 years and still our main objective is long-term spaces in Lloydminster. But now we were, we're mainly working advocating for seniors and that kind of takes two avenues. Um, we, we advocate to government. Uh, we try and work on more spaces, better care, higher standards of care, more money put into the care. Uh, and the other um, side of the advocacy is working with seniors that are having trouble. Uh, sometimes seniors don't know where to turn, where to go if they're having problems, or sometimes they get dealt with quite badly in a particular situation, and they want to try and do something about that or, or bring that to the powers of be. How do they do that? So that part of the advocacy we really get involved with too. And when and people will come to us or we're open, they can come to us at any time and we will help them with that. Um, if they want us to help, you know, get the information together, want us some help on where do I go with this? Um, do you want help with us to go with you when you talk to these people? Um, so we're willing and able to help in, in all of those areas uh, um, as, as it comes up. So, and, and we're open to all, all members of the public. Um, we, we sell memberships. That's how we get our money to, to uh, work on, uh, to pay our expenses. Um, and we like to have a large membership base so that we can kind of show the politicians that we are, have good support. And, but, we, but it's not necessary. If you're not a member, you can still come to us and say, look, I need some help here. I have an issue. Um, what can you do to help us? So just show up at Tuesday, on Tuesdays at noon at the Legacy Center to our meeting and, and uh, we'll take it from there and see what we can do. Uh, well, we and there isn't everybody, but we try and help as much as we can. And there is an opportunity on Monday, Graham, you are having the annual general meeting. So uh, this is obviously a little different than your, your regular meetings. So uh, tell me, that's at 1030 at the Legacy Center uh, on Monday. What is the plan for the AGM? 
Uh, you're correct. Uh, that is Monday, 1030 at the Legacy Center. And our, our main uh, idea for the annual general meeting is we, of course, have to have an annual general meeting and do our financial report and our minutes and, and elect three new board members. But we want to report to the public. And this is a time to kind of stop and take a look at what we've done for the last year, report to the community what we've been doing for the last year, and then to start to think about what do we want to do in the next year. Uh, so we start to look forward that, okay, here's our, here's our uh, achievements, uh, here's some challenges that are still in front of us. Um, how do we uh, go forward and try and move the needle on some of these things? Because uh, trying to get improvements in healthcare and dealing with governments is uh, quite a task. <laughs> and, and it's almost something that is never over. Well, Graham, thank you so much for chatting with me today. I really appreciate it. So once again, for uh, those who didn't quite catch it, it's the Concerned Citizens for Seniors Care Society and the general meeting is Monday starting at 1030 at the Legacy Center. That's all correct information? That is correct. And we'd like to see as many people there as possible. All right. Well, thanks again for joining me, Graham. And uh, good luck with everything with the society. You guys do a lot of great things. And uh, we'll chat with you again soon. Thank you very much. Abby St. John joins me now with the weather. And Abby, boy, I'm so tired of the wind. Um, I know nobody wants to hear that, but. <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely. Um, so it is supposed to slow down. That is the good news. Okay. Slow down just a bit. It's still going to be a little bit windy considering where we are, but uh, that is going to slow down from where it's at right now. We've had up to 65 kilometer gusts today, 43 kilometers currently right now, um, and a mix of sun and clouds. So it was quite warm out despite that really windy condition. Uh, 17 degrees currently here, a mix of sun and cloud. It was sunnier earlier, but those clouds have definitely started to come in. Uh, current temperatures in Alberta, 20 in Provost and in Wainwright, 21 in Vermilion, 17 in Marwain, 19 in Vegreville and Edmonton, 16 in St. Paul, 8 in Cold Lake, 14 in Bonneville and 10 in Lac La Beche. And in Saskatchewan, six up in Isla Cross, eight in Green Lake and Meadow Lake, 13 degrees in Pierce Land, 14 in St. Walberg, 16 in Maidstone, 19 in Macklin, and 18 out in North Battleford. Overnight tonight in North Battleford will drop down to four degrees, 20 kilometer per hour winds, and there's about a 78% chance of some showers uh, in the evening, followed by rain and drizzle later on. Uh, and it is going to be quite chilly and gloomy out. So it's not going to be too great of an evening. And then tomorrow, daytime high of just 10 degrees. So it is going to be a little bit colder, uh, 24 kilometer per hour wind. So it's going to be breezy, but not as bad as it's been um, and a 91% chance of some showers and cloudiness. Overnight tonight in Cold Lake will drop down to two degrees colder with an 88% chance of some rain and drizzle 17 kilometer per hour winds. And then tomorrow, daytime high of 9 degrees, so it is going to be cold out tomorrow. 17 kilometer per hour winds, and then a 78% chance of some morning showers, uh, followed by a shower in spots in the afternoon, and it will remain quite cloudy. Overnight tonight here in Lloydminster will drop down to 2 degrees. That wind should drop down to 20 kilometer per hour uh, by the evening. Chilly, uh, and we have an 88% chance of some rain and drizzle this evening. And then tomorrow, to break down the day, we are expected some showers tomorrow. Uh, 3 degrees at 6 a.m., 19 kilometer per hour winds. So that does slow down a little bit. 22 kilometer per hour winds by noontime, 6 degrees, and uh, expected showers, 64% chance. And then around 6 p.m., partially sunny uh, with a mix of showers as well. 8 degrees, so it is going to be quite chilly out tomorrow, uh, 19 kilometer per hour winds, and then by midnight it should be mostly clear, 4 degrees and 11 kilometer per hour winds, so that at least will slow down. And then on Sunday, a mix of sun and cloudy, mostly sunny but cool with a high of 12 and a low of 4, and then on 18 it warm, or on Monday rather, it warms back up to 18 as the daytime high with a low of 7 and partially sunny skies. Uh, that is a look at your evening weather forecast. We'll have more news coming up after the break.
The Lakeland Rustlers men's volleyball team had one of the best seasons in program history and also gained national recognition for the first time. Our Thomas Wildman has more. Today I'm joined by Taylor Dyer, the head coach of the Lakeland Rustlers men's volleyball team, and he's here today to talk about the season as a whole, and so thank you so much for being with me today, Taylor. Yeah, appreciate it. So Taylor, this was one of, if not the best year in program history. Just talk to me about the whole season as a whole and some of the things that made this season so spectacular for you and the guys. Yeah, it was a fantastic season for our group. I think uh, we're, we're probably one year ahead of schedule of where we thought maybe we were going to be. So um, again, we had the, you know the most wins in a season uh, in, in college history. We uh, won our, semi, our quarterfinal at conference championships, uh, had an opportunity to play uh, for a medal. So, I mean, we lost the semifinal in five sets, lost the bronze medal in five sets. So, again, we're, we're right at the top of the league right now, which is uh, super encouraging and uh, couldn't be happier with, with the group and uh, the season that we've had. And I think we just fell a little bit short. Great part is, though, we get to return everybody just, just about everybody next year. So, it should be another really good season for our group. Um, and then, obviously, a couple standout athletes Jake Willick, all conference libero. Um, Kiefer Sinclair, he was our all-conference uh, setter for us in his first year with us. So, yeah, lots of highlights, lots of really, really amazing volleyball was played. And, yeah, couldn't have been happier with how the season went. And one of the other big headlines for the men's team this year was the first time ever that you guys rank nationally. So just for you, for being part of this program for so long, how good is it? does it feel for you as the coach and for the program as a whole to finally get that national recognition? Yeah, the recognition is cool. I think the guys really, you know, just a testament to how hard they've worked, you know, throughout the year. And then the guys who have been here for a few years, how hard they've worked. And to get, kind of get that recognition is great. Um, it, you know, it's great for recruiting. It's great uh, for Lakeland College and uh, getting our name on the map a little bit on the men's side of volleyball for a change, which is, which is going to be a really good thing moving forward for us. And um, yeah, it's just a really cool opportunity for us to kind of showcase ourselves. And then you mentioned uh, your two all-star players making the ACAC teams, but you as well getting your first ever Coach of the Year award for the ACAC North Division there. Just um, how does that make you feel getting that recognition as well and feeling like you get all that work that you've put in as the coach here, um, you know, get recognized again? Yeah, it's really cool to be recognized by your peers as, as far as doing a good job. And um, again, the, the Awards for me, it doesn't really mean too much. Um, we're striving for the same thing, which is the big one at the end and, um, and, and winning a conference championship and going to nationals, like that's our goal. And um, again, I, I, I won't win coach of the year if we don't have the players buying into what we're trying to do and um, going out there competing every single weekend. Cause again, we are the toughest comp, uh, conference in the, in the country. So um, again, I'm, I'm not winning those awards if it's not for our team. And so you mentioned earlier that you're having most of the core returning. So just now that we're into the off season here, uh, how is recruiting going as well as just how the off season training is going for the boys and you as well? Yeah, our postseason training was really good. Um, recruiting went really well as, uh, as well. Um, again, didn't have to do a ton of recruiting. We have almost everybody back. We lose our libero. Um, after that, we have everybody else returning, which bodes well for us. It's just everyone's a one year older and, um, one more ex uh, experience. So um, the recruiting side was, has, gone, has gone good. We've added a few pieces that I think are going to uh, help us. And, and then more for the future down the line once some of our guys who are here now um, leave. So um, no, it's, it's been a really good off season and um, certainly looking forward to next year already. Excellent. And well, we're here at Primetime Local News are also looking forward to next season as well. We hope to cover lots of the men's volleyball team throughout the next season as well. And so we will have plenty of that coverage coming up next season. Time now to take a look at all of the pet pictures you've been sharing with us for our Pets of the Day. We want to see your pets. Send photos of your pet and their name to have them featured on Pet of the Day.
Today I'm joined by Michaela, who is one of the organizers or a volunteer with the Lashburn Community Days, which is coming up tomorrow. Thank you so much for taking the time to come down today. Thanks for having me. And so we're just going to jump right in. And to start, what is Lashburn uh, Community Days for those unaware? So Lashburn Days is just a day where um, some local vendors, um, some local companies, they all come together and just put on some activities for the kids and things like that. Um, so we have a lot of things going on. We have the Maidstone RCMP, they have the crash simulator, the um, fire truck is coming out for an extraction. Um, we have like 30 plus vendors and things that are like that out there. Um, so there's inflatable castles, um, balloon animals, all that kind of thing for the kids. Um, so it's just a really big event that just really brings a lot of local community um, and members together to kind of give a fun day for the kids. And this is an annual event that goes on in Lashburn. Can you talk to me about how long this has been going on and how it's kind of changed over the years? So it's been going on, I don't even know, forever. I'm not actually from the area locally but I've been here for this will be my third one um, so now we're kind of getting more involved with it rather than just attending it um, and in saying that just in the last few years we've seen that there's a lot more events that are really geared towards the kids um, there's always been a lot of like food vendors and things like that but this year with those bounce castles and then they have like the cash scramble and then those inflatable like hamster um, things and they're all free for the kids. So I've just really seen rather than it being like a display of walking around, there's a lot more interactive things. And so that really brings out a big crowd um, and everybody loves the, the parade and pancake breakfast, breakfast to start the day as well. So. You can't go wrong with a pancake breakfast. No, that's not for at sure. all. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I want to talk about a little bit about um, the sponsors that are backing this event up yep. and a little bit about um, your work behind the scenes. Um, kind of how it, is this whole team putting this event on and can you give a little more insight into that? So there has been, I would say, countless hours. Um, the main person that I've been dealing with is Carmen. Um, so they're the smoke and jerks. So they're actually going to be there. We're doing an Oilers after party, um, or sorry, watch party um, at the end of the day. So smoke and jerks is there. Um, I know Beaton is one of the ones that put, is the sponsors that puts on the um, dunk tank. So that's there as well. Um, I wouldn't even be able to tell you the amount of hours and work that goes into it. Um, me, myself, um, we put a, a little bit of time into it, but definitely more to come in the, the next few years. Yeah. And then um, I'd also like to ask you what you're personally looking forward to the most. I know that you said this is your third year going to be experiencing it. So can you talk to me about your um, personal, um, what you're most looking forward to? What I'm most looking forward to, gosh, Honestly, the whole day is just amazing for the kids. We start with the breakfast and the parade, um, all those games for the kids. And then there's, again, that watch party. There's band playing, the markets. Um, ultimately, the thing that I look forward to the most is just the smile on the kids' faces. Um, it's just such an enjoyable day for everybody all around. You really can't go wrong with it. So um, I know for all the people that put in the time and the money, the sponsors and the organizers and everything like that, um, really just being able to see the joy on the community and the kids' faces after you've done all that work, that really is just the benefit of it all. Well, that put a nice little bow on it. I think we can um, wrap it up there. That covered all the questions that I had, at least. So thank you again so much for taking the time to come down to talk about this. Yes, no worries. Thank you. Coming up tomorrow, downtown Lloydminster is going to be the place to be. It is Street Fest, and you can start your day by stopping by the Olive Tree. They'll have a pancake breakfast. That's going to run from 9 until 11, and then take in all the fun activities that are Street Fest. Head to the Kids Zone. That's where you're going to find bouncy castles. You're also going to find a sidewalk art extravaganza. Make sure you check out the Adventure Zone. In the Sports Zone, you're going to find the Street Hockey Tournament. There's also going to be go-kart race tracks. Just Cruising Car Club, they're going to be on hand. There's going to be an art market, a farmer's market, a craft tent, street performers, wagon rides, and more. For full details and to plan your day, head to the city's website, lloydminster.ca.
This weekend is the 69th annual Lee Park Rodeo. Rodeo performances start tonight, then tomorrow and Sunday afternoon, the rodeo goes at one o'clock and there's going to be great talent performing and taking part in the Lee Park Rodeo. And they've got some special guests that are going to be there as well. The Wild Rose Trick Riders will be there tomorrow and Sunday. Miss Rodeo Canada is going to be on hand all three days. They've got the rodeo dance tomorrow night at the Mara Wayne Arena and the Ammon Roots will be performing on a Sunday morning. Plus, there's plenty of room to camp as well if you head out to the Lee Park Rodeo. You can get a single day ticket or you can get a weekend pass to take in the full weekend of the 69th Lee Park Rodeo. For full details, go online, leeparkrodeo.com. And coming up tomorrow, it's Lashburn Day in the town of Lashburn. You can start your day by heading out for a delicious pancake breakfast. They're going to follow that with a huge parade and then lots of fun for the family. You'll be able to check out the vendor market, take a tour of the museum, stop by the library book sale. There's going to be live entertainment from the Prairie Dogs, demonstrations from Maidstone RCMP and the Legacy Regional Protective Services. Plus, they're hosting a kids movie night and an Oilers watch party as well. So check out Lashburn Day coming up tomorrow. Well, whatever you choose to do this weekend, we hope you stay safe and stay healthy. What's Happening is brought to you by Northern Factory Workwear, Circle Drive East, Saskatoon, and Highway 17 South, Lloydminster. Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery, downtown Lloydminster. I'm very happy to be joined here today by Lynn Yonker. She is a settlement worker in schools for Catholic Social Services here in the Border City. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Of course. Now, today we're going to be talking about a really fun program that started last year in the city called Summer Gration. And this year it's Summer Gration 2024. So can you tell me a little bit about what this program is and the purpose of it? So Summer Gration is a time that we have through July and August offering some sports and activities for families. It's open to the whole community, um, but we work with newcomers. So it gives us a chance to help newcomers integrate into the community and to help the whole community stay active throughout the summer months. Yes, it sounds like an incredible program, especially for the newcomers and their children. Uh, being a child in a new city or even a new country can be very daunting and scary. So this is a fun way for them to integrate themselves into the community and get a little bit more comfortable. Now, uh, this is the second year that summer gration is going on. Comparatively to last year, is there anything different? And what can the children and families expect from this year? So it'll run similarly to last year. We've added a few extra activities, things that were popular last year, and some new ones such as a beach activity day at Sandy Beach and mini golf. So a few different things from last year, but we had over 400 participants last year. So we're expecting the same amount or more this year. And the kids really seem to enjoy it last year. This year, it'll be some activities that are open to us whole families, not just the kids. So hopefully we get a lot signed up because spots are filling in quickly. Yes, I can imagine that. This is just a fantastic way to spend your summer, especially if you're new to the city. Now, from someone uh, from Catholic Social Services, how important is it uh, to have a program like Summer Gration in the city? I think it's very important because a lot of the kids, they come in, they don't know what's available to them. They don't have much to do during the summer months, obviously, because some school is out. So it gives them a chance to still interact with their friends, still feel connected to other people, not just those they've met in school, but new people that they'll meet through these activities. And just to know what's available in the community and to keep practicing English as well, if that isn't their first language. So it gives them those opportunities, which yes. they wouldn't have otherwise. 
For sure. And it kind of gets them prepared if they're starting school for the first time in the fall as well. Uh, they can meet some of the kids that they might go to school with. So I think this program, uh, like I said earlier, is a fantastic and great way for these kids and families to get to know one another and the city as a whole. So on that note, how can people uh, register? Where do they have to go and what do they need to know? So all of our activities are free. Thankfully, it's funded through Sask Lotteries and IRCC in conjunction with us, Catholic Social Services, Gateway for Newcomers, and Swiss, myself, Settlement Worker in Schools. So they don't have to worry about cost. They can just, there's a poster. Some of the schools have sent it out. You'll see it on our Facebook page as well, Summer Gration, and they just need to scan the QR code and they can sign up each child who's interested and they can select which ones, which activities they want to do. And they they have that option. So it's pretty easy. They can also contact Johanna Reyes. Her email is johanna.reyes at cssalberta.ca. Or they could also call if they need more information or want to register at 780-875-9084, extension 3319. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, and I wish you the best of luck for this year's summer gration. Thank you. I hope so. Well, it's always kind of interesting, Abby, when uh, the sports seasons overlap. Mm -hmm. And of course, this weekend, uh, the CFL opens in Edmonton. And this is always exciting to experience when you're in the stands. A Royal Canadian Air Force CF-18 Hornet from Four Wing Cold Lake will conduct a flyby before the Edmonton Elks season opener tomorrow. The Elks are hosting the Saskatchewan Rough Riders at approximately 2.04 p.m. The Hornet will fly over Commonwealth Stadium from north to south. And just to note that the Hornets participation is subject mm -hmm. to the weather and any operational requirements. So, and that 2 p.m. start time is a bit of a change. Yes, yes, because of course the Oilers start the Stanley Cup final series tomorrow um, at around six, I think. So they did have to change the game of the Elks to start a little bit earlier in the afternoon, which is fine. Exciting. All right, that is all the news we have for you tonight. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a good evening. Thank you.